Hello everybody. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to solve second order reducible differential equations. So in example one, we've been given that x is equal to e to the t, and that y is a function of x. And we've been asked to show that x dy by dx is equal to dy by dt. And then for part two, we're going to show that this is true. And then for part b, we're going to combine everything we've done in part one and two to solve this differential equation as a complementary function. Okay, so for part one then, we're going to work out dy by dt. And to do this, we need to use the chain rule. So dy by dt will be equal to dy by dx multiplied by dx by dt. Because then can you see these two dx's will cancel and we've got dy by dt. On the right hand side and we can work out dx by dt because we know that x is equal to e to the t so if we differentiate this dx by dt this is the same e to the t which is equal to x so dy by dt will equal dx by dt so x multiplied by dy by dx and this is what we were asked to show in part one. Part two, we need to differentiate this again. We know that d2y over dt squared is equal to the derivative with respect to t of dy by dt. And we've just worked out dy by dt as x dy by dx. So this will be derivative with respect to t of x multiplied by dy by dx. And we can differentiate this using the product rule. So d2y of a dt squared will equal our x term multiplied by the derivative of this term with respect to t. So we'll need to use implicit differentiation. So we have x d2y over dx squared multiplied by dx dt plus the derivative of our x term with respect to t so dx over dt multiplied by this term dy by dx and now we can tidy this up because these two dx's will cancel and we've already worked out dx by dt as as x over here so d2y of a dt squared will be equal to x multiplied by x, so x squared, d2y of a dx squared plus dy by dt. But we were asked to make this the subject. So all we need to do is move a dy by dx to the other side. So now we get x squared d2y of a dx squared d2y over dt squared minus dy over dt. So now for part b, we can reduce this differential equation into a simpler form by replacing this term with what we have here and the dy by dx term with what we have over here. So for this bit, we can write d2y over dt squared minus dy over dt minus the 6x times dy by dx and we can work this out by dividing both of these sides by x so this is 1 over x dy by dt and then we're adding on this 6y to make 0 now we can simplify this because this x and 1 over x will cancel. We have a negative dy over dt here and 6 of them over here. So we can write d2y over dt squared minus the 7 dy by dt plus the 6y 
equals zero. So if you remember our work on differential equations previously, now we can use the auxiliary equation. So m squared minus seven m plus six will equal zero. We can factorize this so we get m minus six and m minus one. So our solutions are m equals six and m equals positive one. And we can substitute these roots into our complementary function. So y will equal a e to the six t plus b e to the one t. But if you remember over here, we said that x is equal to e to the t. So we can now write this in terms of x. If x is equal to e to the t, then t will be the natural log of x. So y will equal a times e to the natural log of x to the power of 6. So using the power rule to bring this up to the top plus b e to the natural log of x. We can see that this e and natural log will cancel for both terms. So our general solution is y is equal to a x to the 6 plus b multiplied by x. Okay. And in example 2, we're going to look at using a particular integral with boundary conditions. Okay, so in example 2, we've been given that x is equal to e to the t, and we've been asked to use this substitution to show that this differential equation can be transformed into this reduced form. And because this is equal to 10, this is a non-homogeneous, which means we're going to use the particular integral. So if we used what we did in example 1, where we found dy by dt is equal to x dy over dx and x squared d2y over dx squared is equal to d2y over dt squared minus dy by dt. So rather than deriving these two again, I'm going to use these in example 2. So I've written these two here and here. Okay, so now we can substitute these into our original differential equation. So we'll replace this term with this and the x dy by dx with the dt. So dty over dt squared minus dy dt is equal to all of this minus the 4 and then this bit we know is dy by dt and this is equal to 10. So now we can see we've got a negative dy by dt here, negative 4 of them here, so we can simplify this to get d2y over dt squared minus 5 dy dt is equal to 10. So now we can use the auxiliary equation. So we have m squared minus the 5m equals 0. We can factorize the left hand side. So m lots of m minus 5. So our solutions are m equals 0 and m equals positive 5. And now we can use these two with our complementary function. So y will equal a e to the 0 t using this 0 here plus b e to the 5 t using this 5. We know e to the 0 t is just going to be 1. So this simplifies to make y is equal to a plus b e to the 5 t. So now we have our complementary function, we need to find our particular integral. So ordinarily, we would say let y equal a constant which we might call lambda. But if you remember back from our previous work on differential equations, we have a similar term in our complementary function. We've got a constant here and a constant here. 
So now we need to multiply this by the variable t. So our particular integral is lambda t plus a constant which we'll call d. So next we'll find dy by dt, which will give us lambda, and then d2y over dt squared, which will give us zero. And now we can substitute each of these back into our differential equation up here. So we'll substitute this into here, and we get zero. Then we'll substitute dy by dt, which is lambda, into our equation. And we have zero y terms. So this is equal to 10. Which means that lambda must equal negative 2. So our particular integral then would be y is equal to negative 2t. Substituting lambda back into here. And we have no constant term. So this is our particular integral. So now we need to write t back in terms of x. So we'll substitute x back in. We've been told that x is equal to e to the t. So if we take the natural log of both sides, t will be the natural log of x. So now we have y is equal to our complementary function, a plus b e to the 5t, which is natural log of x. So I'll write this 5 as power, natural log of x to the 5, minus our particular integral, negative 2t, and t is the natural log of x. We can simplify this term by cancelling the e and the natural log. So we're left with y is equal to a plus b x to the 5 minus 2 times the natural log of x. And now we can use our boundary conditions to find the values of a and b. We've been told that when y equals 0, dy by dx equals 8 and x equals 1. So I'm going to begin by differentiating our equation here with respect to x. So dy by dx, the constant a will go. When we differentiate bx to the 5, we get 5b x to the 4. And when we differentiate the negative 2 ln x, we get minus 2 over x. We've been told that this is 8 when x equals 1. So 8 will equal 5b minus 2. So b will equal, we'll move a 2 to the left side, divide by 5. So b will equal positive 2. So now we can work out a by substituting y equals 0 and x equals 1 into here. So we get y, 0, is equal to a plus b, which we know is 2 x to the 5 is just 1, minus 2 times the natural log of 1, which is 0, and this term will go. So we get 0 is equal to a plus 2, so therefore a must equal negative 2. So finally, our particular solution becomes y is equal to minus 2 plus 2x to the 5, minus 2 times the natural log of x. Okay. Well, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. If you did find that helpful, please like and subscribe. And you can download the full lesson and worksheet from my website, mrmathematics.com. There's a link in the description below. Thanks again and take care.